Okay guys, today I'm with some friends and I have something different than usual for you. J'espère que va passer le bonjour de la mer. Car photographer. A shadowy light into the dangerous world of a man who takes pictures. North Waters. A young photographer on a crusade to champion the cause of car photography, street photography, and fuck yeah. Even though the earth of my photographic work is portraiture, I don't like to be attached to a particular genre, so I've tried many different things in my career. But there is one I've never done and it's car photography. That's why today it's gonna be different. I'm not taking you with me to teach you things, I'm taking you with me so we can learn things together. And luckily today we are with a pro. I don't know if you remember, I met 7 Terra and North Borders at the VidCon last September. Mike sent me a message a few days ago asking me for a little help on After Effects to create a special effect for a cinemagraph. Mike, if you don't know, does a lot of car photography and today he has a Tesla in his hands. Personally, I'm not into cars at all. For me, it's not a beautiful object in particular, it's just the machine that makes you go from a point A to a point B. But the Tesla, beside the ecological aspect, and uh, I must admit, yeah, I'm psyched. You know that here I'm mostly interested in the creative process. So today it's a little behind the scene to understand a little bit what's going on in Mike's head when he takes pictures. Okay, after Mike and Limon picked me up, we drove across town to Footscray to meet Liam and get ready for the photo shoot. Cause we are pros. It fucking puts your head right back into the seat. You get that like. Okay, okay, that's enough. What? We are not having fun, we call that creating content. One might think that in product photography, in this case a car, only the product counts. Well, it doesn't. A product alone can't convey a story, and in a picture, the most important thing is what it tells. Storytelling is something you can only create with the environment. That's why the place where you shoot is what has the most powerful and persuasive impact on your image. I have a few ideas of where to go, um, and also there's a spot near here that could be good as well. Actually, you know, um, where we parked the WRX Le Mans for the Google Pixel photo, and then we shot it under the bridge there. I think this car there could be cool too, with the whole city in the background. You can use Google Map to find interesting shooting locations. With the satellite view, you can spot long, slightly off-center roads or accessible industrial areas. Street view even allows you to virtually walk around the chosen location and start thinking about composition. It's also easy to determine the position of light sources, especially the sun. Okay, this is the place Mike finally chose. On the one hand, the road is narrow and not very crowded. But on top of that, behind the car, there are trains that can pass by and leave beautiful light streaks. And finally, in the background, we have the Melbourne skyline and its beautiful lights. Yeah, we have a great spot. Okay, I know, I made a 20 minute video about it and I've already said it a million times, but sorry, expect me to say it in every video. The most important thing in a picture is the composition. It's really interesting to follow the creative process of other photographers because you see how obsessed we all are with it. Mike is super meticulous and manages to find a balance between testing a lot of things, but still managing to focus on the essential. Okay, remember the last video about food photography? You create your composition and you adjust the elements bit by bit. Now, it's pretty much the same thing. It's gonna be very annoying when a car comes through. Not if, when, because it will happen. So we should try and get this shot pretty quickly. Ah, oh, fuck. Sorry. Thank you. Reverse. Back, uh, straight back. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Full lock left in, forward. Yeah, keep coming. Straight. Can you go back, full lock back? Nah, this is fucked. Um, straight, back, 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 back. Uh, forward a little bit? Yeah. Perfect. 
Okay, well, at least I learned one thing, and that's that I'm not sure this kind of photography is for me. <laughs> Clearly, I don't have the patience. Mike, any final tips on car photography? <laughs> What's a good tip? <laughs> Fuck, great question. Um, you know what? Le Mans is really good at answering those kind of <laughs> questions. <laughs> Uh, telephoto lenses work well with car photography, That's so right, you don't yeah. get... Telephoto lens? <laughs> you get a nice compression, otherwise, yep. if you use a too wide of a lens... No, you're not too every, wide. Everything will look really warped. Yep. Okay, lens compression. When you shoot with the wide angle, you're going to extend the background in the depth direction. The wider the angle, the more distant the background elements will appear. With the telephoto, is the opposite effect. You will have a compression effect of the distance between the background and the subject, which will give a much more immersive feeling, also because you will increase the depth of field. If you want more precision, I'll let you watch the video I made about lenses. Use a polarizer. Yeah, polarizer. To cut out reflections. Polarizing filters, CPL. The most useful filters in photography with the ND filters. First advantage, if you make a landscape with a CPL, you will get a slightly more contrasted image. And therefore, more contrast means more saturation. The colors will be a little more vibrant. But above all, it's an anti-reflection filter. On water, reflections in the eyes, on reflective surfaces such as the windows of buildings or the car body. It will reduce or even eliminate certain reflections and improve the quality of your image. What else? Um, do what Mike does and Mike can tell you all about it. It's oh a, yeah, it's so all about like car photography. High dynamic light yep. thing that you do. Oh yep, so if you're shooting at night, remember to take three photos. So when you press the shutter once, you go, that's the one photo, which is going to be underexposed. And then you take another shot and you go, that's two photos. And that one's going to be an exposed shot of the car with the lights off. And then you're going to be like, uh, take a third photo, which is going to be a shot exposed of the car like you just took of the lights but with the lights on, which is going to be a shot pretty much of the tail lights on the ground, and then you merge it all together in Photoshop using the light and blend tool. Well, if you want to know more about that, if you want to see us test the Tesla, and if you want to know why Mike asked me for a little help, well, I invite you to check it out on his channel. If you're interested in becoming a car photographer, you will learn a lot. A big thanks to North Borders and Seven Thera, Lehman Fan. It's awesome to be able to hang out with a team like that, to be able to observe their creative process, how they work together, and how real, nice, and super professional they are. You fucking fucking fuck you! Fuck you fucking! You have all the links in the description to go and see their work. What they do is really inspiring. By the way, it was Liam who pushed me to transform my format to make this kind of video instead of basic face cam tutorials. The creative vlogs, it's thanks to him. And if you like this one, it means you will like the others. Don't hesitate to subscribe, ring this little bell, and then in addition to a little like, don't hesitate to give me your feedback. Every time I read your comments, it warms my little heart. See you, mate. Keep on creating.